Let's look at a really simple model of a lung. As you can tell, I'm drawing it so that it has a tube-like structure which can represent the trachea or the bronchi, and the tube structure leads to the circular thing which represents the alveoli. So let's say this is a lung right after a person has exhaled. That means that whatever's left in the lung is going to be deoxygenated air. And so we'll draw that in red so that you can remember. And it's interesting to note that there is air left in the lung after you've exhaled, and it is all deoxygenated. Then outside, this air is fresh and oxygenated. Let's say this person is in a park or something, so this is really nice air. Now let's look at what happens when you breathe in. So you're inhaling, and as you probably know, when you inhale, what you're doing is increasing the volume of your lungs. And you're really mostly increasing the volume of the alveoli. And that way you're sort of sucking air in from outside. But if you look here, you'll notice that you have all this deoxygenated air that's already in your alveoli and in your trachea and bronchi. And when you expand your alveoli, you're going to suck that in. So there's going to be some part of the air in your larger alveoli now, which is already deoxygenated. But everything else, luckily, is going to be nice, fresh, oxygenated air. So we'll draw that in blue. So now that your alveoli have this fresh, oxygenated air in them, they're going to take the oxygen and put it into the blood. And so that nice, fresh air is going to become deoxygenated. So that's the next step, and we'll draw it, we'll call it gas transfer, because your alveoli are transferring the oxygen to your blood. And the size of the alveoli doesn't change. All that's going to change is that now you're going to have all the air in your alveoli being deoxygenated. What's interesting to note, though, is that the air that's in your trachea and bronchi and stuff, it's not exchanging oxygen with the, with the blood, because it's too big, it's not really perfused with capillaries the right way, and so that's going to stay oxygenated. So that's kind of an interesting fact that we'll return to in a moment, which is that not everything you breathe in is actually used effectively for oxygen. Before we go there, what's our, our last step in respiration? Well, we inhaled, we transferred gas, now we're going to exhale. And you can see here that if you were to push out all this air, the first air to leave would be the air in your trachea and bronchi, that's the oxygenated air, and then you'd start getting rid of the deoxygenated air. But you wouldn't be able to push it all out, which is why you have some residual deoxygenated air. So now what we're going to do is look at the volumes involved here and see what we can calculate. So let's start with this tube-like structure, which represents the trachea and the bronchi. This has a certain volume, which doesn't change really during respiration, and that volume is VD. So you might be wondering why D? Well, it's because we call it a dead volume. That's where the D comes from. And the reason it's dead is that if you look over here, during the gas transfer, you see that there's no oxygen being exchanged there. So it's functionally a dead space. So meanwhile, this alveolus, before it expands, is going to have a certain volume, and we're going to call that volume VI. And we're going to call it VI because it's the initial volume of the alveolus before it expands. And finally, the amount of volume that we probably care about most is the amount by which this small alveolus increased in order to become big, and that we're going to call VT. The reason we call it VT is because it's known as the tidal volume. And the reason it's called tidal is probably because it increases and decreases like the tides, you could say. And I just want to be clear that VT refers only to the expanded part of the alveolus. So the total size of the larger alveolus is VI plus VT. And to make that clear, we can actually just show that right here. So this is VI plus VT. Now in this second picture, we can ask ourselves how much deoxygenated air is in the large alveolus. Let's see if you can figure that out. Well, it shouldn't be too hard. It's exactly as much as was in the first picture. So it's VI plus VD. So VI plus VD. 
So if that's how much deoxygenated air is in the large alveolus, how much oxygenated air is in the large alveolus? Well, the total amount of fresh air that we breathed in was Vt. But not all of that got to the large alveolus because a certain amount, which as we know is called Vd for dead volume, never quite got there. So that leaves the difference, which is Vt minus Vd. Sorry, this is getting a little messy. I hope you can see that Vt minus Vd refers to this part that I'm tracing out here. And that's kind of a useful thing for us to know, because while we breathed in a total of Vt, the tidal volume, if you look from outside, that's how much you see going into the lungs, the actual amount that reached the alveoli and can be used is not Vt, it's Vt minus Vd. And so this is important for us to consider when we think about rates, when we think about ventilation rates. Because there are two different ways that we can calculate a rate of ventilation. The first is to say how much air is coming in and out of the lungs per minute. And so that's calculated with Vt times the respiratory rate. So Vt is the amount you breathe in and out, and the respiratory rate is the number of times you do that per minute. So as a result, this gives you what we call the minute ventilation, which is the amount of air that you're breathing in and out in one minute. But that's not necessarily the most interesting number for us to look at. What's more interesting is to ask how much fresh oxygen is coming into the alveoli every minute. And it's not Vt that's getting to the alveoli, it's Vt minus Vd. So if we want to make that a rate, we take it and we multiply it by the respiratory rate. And we call that the alveolar ventilation, which makes sense because it's the amount of fresh air that's getting to your alveoli every minute. And by the way, there are some fancy ways to write both of these. Vt times RR, times the respiratory rate, can be written as Vt dot. And the dot signifies a rate. Meanwhile, this guy can be written as Va dot, where again the dot represents the rate, and the A stands for alveolar.